Hi everyone, today we will answer the first of five questions in SOLIDWORKS CSWP exam. Today's topic, we will build this part and determine its mass. So let's get started. At the third page of the CSWP sample exam, it says unit system. So this can be accessed at the bottom right. So we're going to select limiter gram and second for the material and density we will assign that values after building the part the dimensions are referenced at the bottom right of the part so we will build our part by starting our sketch at the top lane select top lane right click hit sketch grab our corner rectangle first point at the origin and drag it towards to the upper left Smart dimension, define our A vertical, define our B horizontal, let's do the equations, actually we can do this also before we started our sketch. Let me pull the exam into view. Grab our equation tool, click on the first cell, type A, press tab, type 213, B, C, D E and we will not include F X type equal sign click on the A cell press slash type 3 and Y plus 10 and click OK maximize our SOLIDWORKS panel re-edit our sketch let's now link our dimensions to our equation grab this dimension rename this as A Equal sign linked to global variable A. Link this dimension and link it to our equation B. Next, we will extrude our sketch region. Select features, click on extruded boss base, and extrude this by 25 millimeters. Let's build our C dimension. Let's sketch on our top lane. Press spacebar to release view orientations. Select normal to. Right click anywhere on the free space. Select line. First point on the right edge with horizontal constraint. Next line at the bottom edge with vertical relation. Grab our smart dimension and define this as 80 millimeter horizontally. And at the bottom, 80 millimeters vertically. Next, let's define our C dimensions. So this one is also C.
grab our three point arc, click on the endpoints, and slowly drag the arc until the center point coincides with the endpoints. Next, select the two lines and arc. Grab offset entities. Tick the reverse option. And specify 15 millimeters as offset distance. Next, we're going to add two lines to close this as a region. Select features and Select Extruded Boss Base. Extrude this by 95 millimeters. Let's create the feature where the hole will reside. Let's sketch on the top plane. Press spacebar so that our view will be normal too. Grab our corner rectangle and click our first point at the lower corner. Smart dimension, 60 by 60. Extrude our sketch by 35 millimeters. Break this edge and add a 15 millimeter radius. Select the surface as our sketching plane. Let's convert the boundaries of this surface as a region by selecting Offset Entities. Tick the Reverse option and offset this by 9. Grab our Extrude Cut. And under the Direction 1 option, select Offset from Surface. Select the bottom surface and key in 5 millimeters. Let's add the 6 10 millimeter fillets. Let's create a plane for our dimension D feature. I'm gonna offset this new plane from front plane by 10 millimeters. Sketch on this new plane. Press spacebar for normal to orientation. Grab our circle. Click our first point above the ribs center. Grab our smart dimension. Specify the 7.5 millimeter distance between this vertical edge and the center point. Dimension this circle. And link this to global variable x. Hit check. The vertical distance between the center point and the top lane should be 95 millimeters. We will make this hollow after creating the second cylinder. Extrude this for a moment. And then we'll define the dimension D later. Grab our equation. Select the extruded cylinder. Add a new equation. Select the 75 millimeter extrusion. On the value slash equation column, link this to D variable.
click OK and that feature is now 130 millimeters. I have already gone ahead and repeated the steps we made on the first cylinder and this time we are working on the right view. Now let's rename this circle as Y. and link it to global variable y click check extrude this grab our equations select dimension 75 and link this to Y and click OK select the cylinder's surface hit sketch Grab our circle, hover on the edge, create the concentric circle, smart dimension, name this as E, link to variable E. Extrude cut, select the through all option. Let's repeat what we did on this second cylinder. Link this to E. Extrude cut through all. Let's hide the two planes. Let's add the 10 millimeter fillets on the four corners. Add the 2 by 45 degree chamfers on the two cylinders. Let's prepare our way for the whole wizard. Sketch on this surface. first line, second line, normal 2, horizontal dimension 30, vertical dimension 30, select the two endpoints, Make it coincident. Convert both lines into construction lines. Exit sketch mode. Select top surface. Whole wizard.
let's put the whole details into view. ANSI metric M8 fit is close. Through hole diameter 15, counter bore diameter 30, counter bore depth 10. And condition through all. Maximize our view. Select the positions tab and drag our hole into the endpoint. Now let us assign the material properties of our model. Take note of the current color of our part. Select part 1, right click, material, edit material. Look for alloy steel. Take note of the density. Click Apply. Notice the change of color on our part. The question for this stage is, what is the mass of our part in grams? So grab our mass properties. Or we can select Evaluate. Here is our mass properties and to be exact we can tick the assigned mass properties option. Let's check if we are correct. And yes we are. For our next video we will go into configurations and link this to design tables in Excel. Thanks for watching!